today we're going to talk about some types of chemical bonds. So before we look at these chemical bonds, we need to review some periodic trends. We're going to look at two key periodic trends, ionization energy and electronegativity. Ionization energy and electronegativity increases as you go up the periodic table and increases as you go from left to right of the periodic table. The ionization energy is the amount of energy it takes to remove an electron. So if we were to look at a sodium ion, or just a sodium atom in general, if we add some energy in the right way, we can actually remove its valence, its one valence electron, creating a positive sodium atom, sodium ion, cation, and a negative electron. Electric ne negativity is the amount of energy to attract an electron, which is kind of like the exact opposite of ionization energy. So let's take a, take a look at fluorine. If we add an electron and some energy to fluorine, we can create a fluorine anion, which has a negative one charge. So why do we have these periodic trends? Electronegativity and ionization energy actually decrease as atomic size increases. The reason for this is that these protons have certain ways of pulling on these valence electrons. If you have more protons, such as in this lead atom, you, ha you exert more pull on these your valence electrons than, say, an atom of carbon, which has only has a positive six charge in the nucleus. Therefore, the lead will pull more strongly on its valence electrons than the carbon atom will. So there are two types of bonds that we're going to look at. We're going to look at ionic bonds, and then we're going to look at covalent bonds. Ionic bonding results when there's a large difference in the electronegativity between the two atoms. Generally, these bonds are going to occur between metals and nonmetals. To take a look at an example, we're going to look at sodium chloride. Um, most of you know this as table salt. Um, the chemical formula for sodium chloride is NaCl, composed of a sodium atom and a chloride atom. The sodium atom has one valence electron, whereas the chlorine atom has seven valence electrons. So, what's going to happen here is that this sodium atom is going to give up this va valence electron to this chlorine atom. To, so that both of these atoms all have a full valence electron shell. If this electron is removed, then you'll have a complete valence shell of eight electrons. And over here, you're going to have a complete shell of eight electrons. This completion is called the octet rule. All atoms want to have a complete valence electron shell. And the way they're going to bond corresponds to the way they fill their electron shell. So next we're going to look at covalent bonding, which has two types, polar covalent and non-polar covalent. In covalent bonding, two atoms share the same electrons, and generally these are going to occur between a non-metal and another non-metal. Polar covalent bonding results when one atom has a higher electronegativity than the other. For example, water, H2O. The oxygen atom attracts the electrons of these two hydrogen atoms. Therefore, because oxygen has a larger nucleus and more protons, it's going to attract these electrons more strongly away from these uh, protons, which only have a plus one charge each. So what's going to happen is that these two electrons from this, these two hydrogen atoms are going to flow, per se, toward this oxygen atom. So polarity is a tendency to have poles. These generally only occur in polar covalent bonds. We're going to take a look at a quick example, hydrogen chloride, HCl. What you know is going to happen is that this chlorine is going to attract this electron away from this hydrogen atom. So what's going to happen is that this has less electrons per se and is more positive. We represent that using a plus delta over here, and this side of the bond will become more negative. We represent that also by a negative delta because of its larger electrons around it. So the last bond we're going to talk about is non-polar covalent bonding, which results when electronegativity of the atoms are exactly the same. And generally, these are monatomic, which means that both of the atoms are exactly the same. So let's take hydrogen, for example. A nonpolar covalent bond between hydrogen is going to be with itself, of course, because they have the same 
electronegativity. This forms hydrogen gas. So of course here you see these two electrons being shared. This one is from this atom, this one is from that atom. So here what happens is that the electrons shared by both atoms are not attracted to either proton nucleus because they are pulling with the same force. Therefore they are still remaining in the middle. So in this case there are no poles. So today we've looked at some of the main bond types of bonds that occur between chemical elements.